A right old mix of celebrities raised and bluffed their way around the table in our celebrity qualifying heat last week. It was presenter Fiona Foster who took home all the chips. I'm Jesse May, joined by former world snooker champion Steve Davis here for the first heat of the PartyPoker.net European Open. Steve, it's uh, now, now the real tournament begins. Yes, it does, but uh, don't discount the, the celebrity qualifier from last week, Fiona, because um, as has been seen in the past before, like the likes of Matthew Stevens, Kafelnikov in various events, Phil Taylor, and of course Helen Chamberlain. Uh, the, 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 the qualifiers, the celebrity qualifiers uh, are capable. Well, they had to play good poker to get here. Last week, we showed you the intricacies of the rules of the game, but you also have to know what beats what. Let's have a look at the ranking of the hands. Every five card poker hand falls into the official ranking of poker hands. It has to be on this ladder. And if you've got nothing else, you have high card only. It doesn't look very good, very pretty, but it wins a hell of a lot of hands. Ace high, of course, the best high card hand. Just above high card, one pair. If two players have the same pair, then we go to the kickers all the way down to five cards. Above one pair is two pair. Yes, two pair beats one. Above two pair is three of a kind. That's sometimes called trips or a set. A straight, higher still. That's five cards in a row of any suits. Ace is high or low, so you can have a bicycle. That's an ace low straight or a Broadway. That's an ace high straight. Above a straight is a flush. Five cards, all the same suit in any order. Above a flush, full house. That's three of a kind plus a pair. If you lose with a full house, uh, well, the game's just bent, isn't it? Above a full house, four of a kind. That's all of a number. And then the best hand you can get in poker is a straight flush. Five cards in a row, all the same suit. A royal flush is the nuts. That's a straight flush, ace high. And uh, if, you, if you get a royal flush, uh, send me a line, you'll get a t-shirt. Well, Steve, walk starts with baby steps. And in poker, what, what hands do you play with? Well, there's an old adage that the best hand before the flop is usually the best hand after the flop. But two things to take into consideration. The amount of players that are likely to see the flop and also how much money it's going to cost you to see the flop as well. These can, become, these can be very important sort of aspects of the game. But the best hands, obviously, the aces, the kings, the queens, they are premium hands. And usually you have the best hand. And it's just whether they hold up or not. After that, you've got the jacks. A bit more of a problem because if somebody's got ace, king, ace, queen, it's about an even money shot. So the further down your pairs are, something like the eights, it's more of a worry once the flop comes out. You may be dominated after that. Then we get down to the high hands. Great hands, ace, king suited. Ace King, fantastic hands, they've got to improve, but also if they do improve, you've got top pair. There's not too much difference between Ace King suited, even though it looks prettier than Ace King. Now, when you get down to some of the prettier hands that could do damage. Well, they call them suited connectors, don't they? They're, they're, they're beautiful. <laughs> these are important things, especially if you can get in very cheaply. Just take a look at these. I'll push these over to one side on their own. These can be very, very good, as long as it doesn't cost you too much money. Suited and connecting. They've got the possibility of flushes and of straights, and also they're hidden. Nobody would know exactly what you've got. If it doesn't cost much money to get in, you can play these and hopefully bust somebody. But you wouldn't want to get married to them, would you? Not at all. Let's see who's playing and what seat they've drawn. Well, two of those players with me now, John Shaw and, of course, Fiona Foster. Now, John, you are the defending champion of the PartyPoker.com Late Night Poker Ace. Do you think this tournament's going to be tougher, or is it business as usual? I think it's going to be a lot tougher because I'm up against professional players this time. So, you just have to do my best. It's just, you're just going to bring your A game and see what happens? That's right, yeah. <laughs> Hopefully, I'll get the aces dealt to me every time. 
Fiona, last week we saw a fascinating uh, celebrity heat of you're the winner of, obviously we're sitting here now. Uh, a lot of letters in uh, about your underhand tactics towards <laughs> the end of that particular heat when you were heads up with John Regis and in employed reporter style uh, psychology by interviewing him and putting him off his guard. You're up against players you don't know now. Are you going to interview them or are you just going to play them? I'm just going to play them, obviously. If there are questions to be asked, I'll be asking them. But that's at the start. And towards the end, you'll lull them into a full sense of security. <laughs> it just felt rude to be sitting there with one other person and not speak to them. Honest. Fair enough. It's good enough for me. Well, best of luck to both of you. <laughs> there you have it. The players are in their seats. Keep the cards up your sleeves. The first hand will be dealt after the break. Welcome back for the first heat of the PartyPoker.net European Open. They're humming, the machines are running, let's get over to the table. Well, there you have it. These six playing down to one. Those yellow chips are worth a thousand each. The blues, two thousand apiece, and the reds are five thousand each. <coughs> cool. Pass. Dave Broadhurst just calling with the King 10 for 2,000. And uh, Ian having a bit of a think now. I guess he could go either way Pass. with that ace eight and he's decided to lay it down. Raise. <laughs> and here comes Fiona. Fiona getting busy. And that's asked a big question of John Houston. 7,000 on John who has the best hand at this yeah. stage. Well, he must show hand. some respect to Fiona. Pass. And so must John Shaw. Six to call. 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 John Shaw not to be bullied. Cool. And uh, call. Dave Broadhurst in as well. well. That gives Dave Broadhurst a bit more value to call with that King 10. If a, if a King comes on this flop, we could have all sorts of early fireworks here. But it is Fiona Foster, the last aggressor. And there is 25,000 in this pot. Big pot early days. And <laughs> who would have thought <laughs> that Fiona would make the best hand on the flop? That Check. pair of threes looking powerful Check. right now. Marvelous as well that she's on the button and has lost the bet. Superb bet coming up. Should Ten be thousand. enough. Let's Pass. check to Fiona. She's wasted no time. Pass. And quick fold, fold has picked her up the pot. Um, that was, I mean, Fiona's just made something out of nothing there. Yes, and uh, to get two callers, um, it was quite nice, really. I mean, once you get two callers, obviously the alarm bells are ringing, but then all of a sudden the flop doesn't help them. They check. Once again, you're in a strong position. Nice, nice take. So Fiona Foster raising her game now that she's in with the pros and finding the butter cutting quite easy so far. But it's early days. I think Dave Broadhurst will feel like he's dodged a ball even though he lost the hand. He's played on television once before and ended up going out the very first hand with Pass. an ace king. It couldn't be blamed, Pass. but uh, he's looking to get a little more hands in. 5,000 more, seven total. John Pass. Houston. Valuing the ace. Pass. Looks like he's got most of them to, Is that all you've got to do? throw it away. <laughs> well, actually, all of them to throw it away. Raise and take it. John Houston's nickname is Texas. He's been around the poker scene for quite a while, but uh, of course they do call him Texas, not because of Texas Hold'em, but because of his last name, Houston, which used to be spelled like the that big city in Texas. And uh, some of the best poker players in the world come out of that Houston area. The button with John Shaw. Small blind and big blind there. And, uh, in the first here, yeah. Been a, a pretty aggressive game already so far. First Pass. position laying Pass. down ace seven. It, it does feel like they've all come oh. to gamble tonight, doesn't it? It uh, does, yeah. Call. Raise. Raise. Well, Pass John Shaw in for the 2,000. Dave Broadhurst was amenable, but now a raise from the big blind. Call. And Jez with a Pass. king eight. <laughs> This is highly aggressive. 
<laughs> this is incredible. They've all got kings. Broadhurst has laid it down, and Shaw's actually got Jez tipped here, king nine against king eight. He couldn't possibly know that. How can he call that? How can he call with king nine? It's it's mints in the first place, but he has. Well, there's one king left in the deck. It didn't hit, but Jez, as the aggressor, five thousand. Well, pound. Pass. Well. You can't blame a few chips in. Yeah, you can't blame John Shaw for, for, for respecting Jez's raise. But, uh, I'm off. Oh, good, yeah. Is that good? Yeah. Yeah. Well, Jez Bailey, he owns uh, several clothing stores <laughs> in the Midlands area, but uh, he might be a poker player. I mean, he's uh, he's off and running. Uh, we're not going to find too much tight play at this table, doesn't look like, Steve. Well, Jez has been playing for a couple of years, plays two or three times a week. You get a lot of experience in that time. Much tournaments experience, sort of small tournaments, tens, twenties, and fifty-pound tournaments. But you do pick up a lot of tactics and awareness from playing as many tournaments as two or three <coughs> times a week. Yeah, and a lot of people tell you those small tournaments Pass. in the Midlands are some of the toughest Pass. tournaments in the poker world. Pass. If you can survive there, Pass. you can thrive <coughs> anywhere. Cool. Jazz limping in here. I don't know if he's seen his hand yet. <laughs> <laughs> I think what we can tell from no raise. from this situation is that a lot of these players consider uh, this event. Uh, you've just got to try and make the most of every chance you get, and as long as there's not too much raising, you're prepared to take a risk and hit the flop. Well, they've both missed here. First aggression going to win. Must 5, do. Must do. Ian Woodley, the eight high is ahead by a long shot, but how could he know it? He's given the long look. With that 10 and the jack on board, it's very risky to try and come over the top. <laughs> it would be suicidal, wouldn't it? <laughs> Jez Bailey, he has put the pedal to the metal and won two pots in a row now with no hands at all. And uh, I mean, how important do you think having that early chip lead is in, in, in these tournaments? Well, as we've seen from many TV events, uh, it, it doesn't always hold up. But I think one thing it does do is relax you. Uh, if you get off to a, a, a good start, if you win a couple of hands, you just <laughs> chill out a bit more. There you go, son. Trying to see the cars from the door. Another chair collapses. <laughs> 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 they, they've got to do something about that chair. Ronnie O'Sullivan. Uh, a few problems in that seat last week. He looks lower than he did to start with anyway. He sure does. The hydraulic chairs and the, just let the air out too quickly Four. there. Pass. John Shaw calling with the ace four suited. Raise, 5, once lost, again, been raised. And now where does John Shaw stand? Well, Jazz Bailey trying to make every post a winning one. And uh, it's a big race, about 5,000. Pass. But, uh, if he can get a call from John Shaw here, Steve, he'll be up against the uh, oh. exact hand he oh. wants to be up on, against well, which is a dominated ace. He's he's calling a lot, isn't he? Yeah. So Shaw. Once again, where does he stand with this ha ace four with his hand? What does he, what does he do now against the bed? I mean, if he comes out betting, fair enough. <laughs> Have you got a straight line down to him, Steve? <laughs> because that is a great bluff, isn't it? In fact, the 10 plays of Jez oh. Bailey, and he's called. He's called with nothing. I mean, he's called because he thinks he's bluffing. This pot, 37,000 already. And a uh, pair Fine. of threes, ace, jack, 10. He's come to play, hasn't he? Oh, John Shaw. And he's got him to lay it down. Followed through. Sometimes the first bluff has got to be followed through with another bluff <laughs> if you're brave enough. <laughs> and he is brave enough. <laughs> he certainly is. And uh, you know, Steve, if you're going to play a lot of hands like calling like that, I guess you have to be prepared to bluff. And uh, you can understand how John Shaw won 50,000 pounds. It was uh, it's the aggression that you talked about. It's not the style of play that uh, that your fans and friends and family want to see because it's a heart in the mouth type of play. But there, it proved the value of representing. Well, so far we've seen uh, every player at this table prepared to walk a line. 
in a very short space of time. Everybody's tried to make their mark <coughs> very early on. Pass. Pass. And this time he throws away Pass. ace five in <laughs> yeah, early yeah, position. A little, a little breather. <laughs> mixing it up a bit. And now Fiona with the ten high, trying to put the moves on John Houston. <laughs> Brace 8,000 more, 10 total. And uh, Houston is a very tough guy to push around. Head-to-head oh. head here, action will be on Fiona, who's trailing. Well, this is a totally different heat for, for Fiona. A different set of problems to overcome. Much more psychological outwitting going on here around the table, even though nothing's been said. But interesting to know 10, if uh, these other players are aware of Fiona's tendencies to, uh, to bluff. Pass. Fantastic. But Follow through there from Fiona as well. She's holding her own very nicely. <laughs> you, you can put a lamb in a, a wolf in sheep's clothing, but uh, Fiona Foster, quality. My name's Fiona Foster. I've just uh, qualified from the celebrity table and um, I'm hoping to uh, repeat my performance now. I didn't let them bully me as I promised myself I wouldn't and I'm not going to give up. Played, uh, played eight hands here, Steve, and every one has been, uh, has been had a little bit of action. Yes, and uh, well, the, the madam of the table, has, uh, she's stamped all authority there, and uh, Fiona's uh, not to be outwitted at this table, as well as uh, being put in the shadows by some of the the trappy play early on by some of the lads, and uh, she's in there as chip leader. Great. And uh, also, she hasn't interviewed anybody yet. Wait till she starts that. <laughs> yeah, there's been no talk at all, I has know. there? <laughs> Call. Call. Dave Broadhurst calling with the crab salad. Jess is in. It's 2,000 around, and you have to imagine Ian will be happy to see this flop cheap. Small pairs, cheap flop. Call. Hit a two. <coughs> Very difficult to put somebody Call. on three twos. Mm. No raise. So this is five-way action. Only Fiona Foster taking a breather. And there's plenty of small plays pairs out there. Oh, boy, if the flop comes deuce three, four, it, 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 this could be all over. <laughs> Not that much chance of it, but you never know. <laughs> Nowhere near it. <laughs> no. Well. Oh, there's a marvellous hand out there lurking. John Houston check. has it, and he's checked it. Check. There's a check raise possibly check. coming up. Check. Yeah, right you are. He's got the top pair and the flush draw. You yeah. would have loved somebody to have bet there, I feel. Check. All checks. And he didn't fall for it. No, Ian Woodley. Not wanting to... Now a seven. Now he's going to have to bet. 10,000. He's got a flush draw and top pair. Well, that may Pass. end this. Jez Bailey, 10 would make him a straight, but uh, not worth gambling on it, and this pot will be over. He's a bit unlucky in a way that, that nobody else had any part of that flop. I mean, it was a very reasonable check on the flop, wasn't it? A five-way action, you have to feel someone's going to have a stab at it. Ian Woodley's having a little think up. Does he think he's on a draw? Does he think he's on some sort of flush draw or straight draw now? Oh. Well, Pass. if he did, he still didn't put any money in. He's going to show the king. And that. And that. So John Houston taking that pot down. Very nice. And, uh, he looks in control, doesn't he? Looks like he, he's used to being around a poker table. 20 years of experience. His, uh, John Houston claims his mentor is one of the shining lights in the British poker world, Mickey Warnick, who's been around for ages, and I think Mickey's going to be playing in this tournament at some point. Biggest win John Houston has had, 65,000. Doesn't say if it's pounds or dollars. Cool. Pass. Jez Bailey, oh, a bit optimistic, nice. under the gun with 2,000. Oh. Fiona Foster, oh. uh, <laughs> these guys have come to play, haven't they? Nice and look Raise at John 10, Shaw from the 12, big blind 12, with the ace-3 suited. Steve, he stuck in 10,000 extra. Pass. Well, 
this is a volatile <coughs> game indeed. Oh, no, it, it, excuse me. The, the raise actually came from Dave Broadhurst. <coughs> oh, that makes more sense. Sorry, yes. Yeah, oh. he's queen. And Fiona getting sucked in somewhat into the frantic style of play that's happening. It's a very loose, aggressive game at the moment. It seems to be anyway. That's the way it would be perceived by Fiona, I'm sure. A totally different type of atmosphere from last week. Yeah, head up here, and oh, you would have thought that uh, Fiona oh. was a bit optimistic, but look at this. Oh, she's hit two pair. Check. But he's hit a straight draw. Whether we get a chance to see the next card, well, that's down to him. 15,000. 15,000. Tell you, Dave Broadhurst has done well to get away from that. You, you, you easily could have fancied him betting that flop, but what, what did he sense? Well, I don't know if he, if he saw last week. Um, but perhaps he, he senses that um, he believes that what Fiona bets is what she's got. That time he was right. Fiona Foster threatening to run away with this. It <laughs> wasn't the best call in the world with King Seven of Diamonds, but it turned out beautifully. <laughs> Sometimes you can, uh, you can dance in the forest and come up looking like a pine tree, I guess. She's 38,000 richer than she was when she started this particular heat. We'll see how oh. Ian views the King Seven. Yes. Any king really is good enough, isn't <laughs> it? Really? To be yes. a fan. It used to be any ice, and, uh, yes. but uh, <laughs> such as the game moved on, it's now any king. Oh. <laughs> Dave Broder's the Jack and Jazz. Looks like he's raising. Raise five thousand more, seven times. Or any queen. I mean, the Queen Nine's obviously a raising hand. They would be considered connectors of some type, wouldn't oh. they? I mean, uh, you know, in the midst of all this action, Steve, it's, it's sometimes hard to remember this is a tournament with a $360,000 prize pool. This, this guy's playing big stakes here, and uh, they're splashing those chips around quite freely. Well, he's got an inside straight draw, and he would need a jack to continue to be a threat. 10, Carries on betting and asks the question of Woodley, who has very little to inspire him to continue. Oh. Or well, does he sense that it's a bluff? Right. To raise. That's a big raise. 16, this is more, 26 total. I would hesitate to say total. this is the most aggressive short table game I've seen recently <laughs> on TV. This is volatile beyond belief. <laughs> Frightening. I'm pleased I'm not out there. I'm, I'm pleased that Fiona's our celebrity here because I wouldn't know where I stood here. This lot are going for it. You know, I mean, normally you'd think that Jez would just fold up automatically, but uh, he doesn't seem to be beyond the re-raise. And he has pull, he's, pulling it, he's pulling off a card. A jack would make him the nuts. Well, that's enough of, a, of the signs for Woodley now. He's in desperate <laughs> straits. He's what? expecting the guy to lay it down, and then he just calls, which shows even more strength. Well, that has given Ian Woodley some extra outs now. He's got the flush draw, but it's Jez Bailey who looks to be... Gee whiz, this is a massive thing to do, to put more money in here. I mean... <sighs> I don't know what to do. What? I mean, what do you do? He's gone big. I mean, think about this. Uh, you know, Ian Woodley has done everything but stand up and say he has a 10. Bluff, bluff, counter bluff. <laughs> He's got to throw this away now. How can he not? I mean, it's been violent stuff. This is like two prize fighters <laughs> slugging it out on the ropes in the first round. This is rocky material. I mean, don't forget, the, these players have put up $5,000 to sit down here. And now Ian Woodley is finding himself in a spot where... Uh, is he considering putting all his chips in on a flush draw? Pot size, 98,000. It's a lot. It's so early in the competition. Surely you want a little run for your money. You know, you want to let the button go around once. I mean, the incredible thing here is that if Ian Woodley had yeah. stuck all his chips in there, Steve, he probably would have gotten away with it. But Jez Bailey, bluff, re-bluff, and... <laughs> what a game this is. Well, he has come to play. I mean, uh, what can you say? This, this is... Uh, he's, he's playing two years. He knows nothing about the game. <laughs> is it reckless or is it genius? Jez Bailey has yet to make a pair. He's won several pots, all on the strength of his aggression. And... Uh, 
actually uh, all the players are asked to fill in questionnaires before sort of so, some of their ideas and thoughts on the game what they've actually achieved within the game one of the questions is name a player whose playing style is similar to you <laughs> gus hansen <laughs> is that what Jess Bailey said? Well, well, I think uh, I think Gus may be imitating Jez. <laughs> that was just fantastic stuff. How brave is that? Not necessarily the way to play cash games, but it can work Pass. tournament style. And all of a sudden, Raise it's making John Houston look a little bit title. pedestrian, although he's come out with a big hand there fighting. Pass. John Pass. Houston may go to the cloth with this one. Five is the bet. It's 4,000 on Jez who obviously calls. Could be in trouble if... Yeah, Woodley's a little bit wounded. He's going to have to just lick his wounds and wait for a better opportunity. If an ace comes down, as Bailey would probably like to see, or as thought he likes to see, it's going to hurt him drastically. What's he going in with the ace for? <coughs> what do we know? Well, Why are we sitting here? Oh, it's the four he was after. Oh, <laughs> oh two of them, sorry. Oh, Lord. Oh, boy. Is it checkaroony time? That would be a, sh a sign of strength, a check from, from him. Oh, and he's giving it a bit of acting as well, which is may well tell. Check. Yeah. John Houston may well pick up on that scratch of the check. head. Check. Check. And he slowed up. That was a lovely check by John Houston. He can only get himself in trouble here. It's the first time that um, Jez Bailey has shown any sort of decision making. Happy. And I think he knows full well that he's got a fairly decent hand with that. This will be a great lay down, but that moment of acting from Jez Bailey. I mean, from John Houston's point of view, he, he's seen the way Jez has played the last few hands. Uh, he'll have to. He must think Jez is at it. Can he get stubborn here with this ace king? Well, plenty of people have before. 20 years experience would tell him it's not the greatest hand if it doesn't improve. We're still in the first level, and John Houston already with a very serious decision. Little does he know he's drawing dead. Well, if, if he steps in this, he could, he, he, he could be history. He just murmured the words, uh -oh. you're trying to get cool. me off my hand, was the last thought that flashed through his mind, which has led him to call. <laughs> <laughs> if it comes a king or ace, Steve, I think John oh. Houston is going to be Splitsville. Now, how to extricate some more money, and that's the question. Not too much acting. That's okay. <coughs> no big size. Okay, look him in the eyes, all right, but not too much of it. <laughs> I, I think John Houston may be... Well, he's considering his ace high is good. Depending on how much Jez bets here, he may be prepared to pay him off. What's the size bet? The pot size is 56. What'd you put in? How much has he put in? 20,000. Well, that's lovely. That's, that's a nice little, yeah, it asked him the question. It shows a bit of weakness, but it's a, a respectable amount of money to earn from somebody, should they think you're bluffing. And this is a very torturous situation for John Houston. Well, in a way, if he's called if he's called the turn, does he not have to call this now? I mean, otherwise he's wasted that turn bet. Not that I'm an expert or anything like that. It's just it crosses my mind. You either get out early or not. I know it's a bigger amount of money he's having to put in. Oh. Yeah, he has called. Yeah, he that's like how he, he reasoned it. He made his decision on the turn, didn't he? And he is not going to like it. Three fours has got him strangulated. The ace king going up in a smokestack. And... Uh, Jez Bailey, <laughs> probably the most inexperienced player on this table, Steve, but playing like a world champion right now. Trips twice already. In these heats, only the winner can progress through to the semi-final stages. Former poker world champion Phil Helmuth tells us what special tactics are required. All right. The unique thing about this tournament is you start with six players, only one player is going to win something or advance, only one. So second through fifth gets nothing. So how do you play under those conditions? Well obviously you play for first. You don't care if you finish sixth or fifth, so you have to devise a strategy where you're playing for first. Lasting until you make the final three and just hanging in there is no good. You have to play a much more aggressive strategy. You have to go for the win. 
cards coming out now. And uh, Steve, I mean, uh, y y you'd think by watching these early uh, hands that uh, players have been told that they all turn into pumpkins if it doesn't get over with in half an hour. Uh, I mean, it, is, is, this, <coughs> is this high quality play or, is, or, or do you think this is inexperience? <clears throat> well, I think it may be players coming with a game plan and oh. refusing to change their game plan accordingly. Sometimes around a table, if somebody's being aggressive, you you take the opposite view. But uh, when no, like the that. immovable mountain <laughs> comes up against one of those other things that doesn't move very far, <laughs> you get action. I mean, the funny thing is that at some point, cards have to be turned over. But as of yet, we've only seen one hand turned over, and it was Jez Bailey's three fours. Beyond that, it's been all bluff, bluff, bluff. The only thing that's giving way at the moment is the Tower of Pisa in the photograph behind. <laughs> Everybody else is bolt upright. <laughs> and there is John Shaw. He's uh, known for fast action himself, but uh, he must be thinking to himself, what have I landed in the middle of? No, he's been swamped. <laughs> he's been swamped by everybody. <laughs> I think probably of, of all the players around the table, Dave Broadhurst oh. has been the quietest, it, it would appear. A bit of experience there along the way. Cool. Jez Bailey's. Any ace worth a call? Changing my views on the game. 10 8. I Ian Woodley seems to be taking the view here, Steve, that uh, any pot that Jez Bailey's in, he wants to be in. Did I hear I raise or no raise? I think that was no raise, wasn't it? It was John Houston. I think it was no raise. And. Uh, Ten. Four players in Ten. the Ten. pot. Ten. Not much of it hit by anybody. Yep. Houston Ten. with bottom pair. Can't be too enamoured with that. <coughs> As is Ian Woodley, and he's checked on the button. That seven has now brought John Shaw Check. into the thick of things. Would he be able to resist? Check. Check. I checked all around twice to Ian Woodley. You'd th he might start fancying his eights, but uh, he's obviously wary. Oh, and look at that. that now. He's obviously going to be slightly worried about Check. Jack Nine, I suppose. But that's a long shot, really. Ten. Well, that's a great card for Ian Woodley because it John is. Shaw has made two pair as well. Oh. And uh, are we going to see a raise here or just a call? I think a raise. Do you think a raise, Jesse? I think a ra I feel a raise coming on. He's got to make some moves because he's a little bit below chip he's level. Gone, he's gone quite short, hasn't he? He's down to 68,000 before this hand. He would like to generate some chips. I mean, what can he be scared of? Obviously, that Jack nine. I doubt, I doubt he'd be scared of Ace Jack. That would have been raised before the flop. <laughs> Sometimes when you've when 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 you've lost a few chips. Uh, he only can think about the hands that beat you. And uh, Ian Woodley staring at that flop like, uh, it's the, like it's the devil of doom. Just calls. Don't make it, please. No, there's no fire. On oh, Houston out. <laughs> and uh, Ian Woodley will be happy by this development, the showdown, showing that his two pair are tops. Tens and eights beating tens and sevens. And uh, that has given him a lifeline to hang on to. Which of these nuts has got the most guts? We'll see after this. So looking at the leaderboard, it's been fast and furious, and Jez Bailey has zoomed to the top. Notice Fiona Foster played the least amount of hands. She's keeping out of a lot of trouble at the moment. Look at the stacks of the chip leader. Fiona, Jez Fiona. Bailey out of Wolverhampton. First time on the TV table, and uh, he's making the most of his uh, chance here. I thought he was Blinds up now, second level. It's... Uh, it's hard to imagine this, this this game going any faster than it is. Wow. Jez Bailey there looked across at the camera. A sort of knowing look. And then turns up the kings. He's raised, praying for perhaps somebody to have a hand along with him. Yeah, totally. And here comes an 
Is that no, an all in? <laughs> no, that can't be. <laughs> Sean Houston he just the ice check. Well, Houston has it in for Jez Bailey. They've mm -hmm. developed a relationship in this short heat already. And uh, Houston praying to see the bullet on the flop. One of them's already gone. It was thrown away by John Shaw with ace three. So only two aces in the pack now to help. That's a pretty decent flop unless the 10 jacks are worry. How much is he? Uh... Uh, oh, oh, boy. <laughs> How much is he? How much have you got, John? Count them out, mate. This pot already 24,000. And uh, this is the question you don't want to be asked when you're on a draw. Yeah, It'll cost you everything. 38. And that's exactly what Jez Bailey is going to put in. He only got 38,000, and he wants it all, does Jez Bailey? 38,000. John Houston just might call. I, he, he, so? he may have had enough here, Steve. He's, what, he's just <laughs> given... He's not he looking can't. happy. No, he can't. Those two fingers up there, they're not sort of like a little sign, are they? <laughs> I don't know what you're doing there, mate, but... Uh, it <laughs> it's not happy. A 10. Houston knows a 10 is the key card. An ace would also win it for him. And... Uh, showing what he's laying down. I wonder if he'll show what he's throwing away. He, he's just about to turn it up. He's just one king, two kings. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. I'm feeling a big angle. Yeah. <laughs> Everything going Jazz Bailey's way. And not John Houston's way. Not at Down all. to 38,000. Expensive. He's enjoying himself out there, Jazz, isn't he? Yes. <laughs> Looks like a bit of a character. <laughs> it used to be the, the inexperienced players, uh, you know, they were, they were considered calling stations, but Jazz Bailey, he's got that aggression, and uh, I do believe he's terrified everybody on this table. Well, there's been so much internet poker played and so much TV recently. I think players have learned from watching the pros and playing online. He's got the ace jack suited slightly better. Will he get any interest? Fiona Foster came in calling with the ace seven. Now it's gotten 10,000 more expensive. What is her plan? Danger. She is playing a lot of flops, isn't she? If the seven comes, poor John Houston will be in for it. Well, it's there for the taking. <laughs> is she going to go for him? I don't think John's going to back down here. No, he's not necessarily in a position to be able to back down. This may not be the best move. 10,000. Although he just may think it's not his day. Come on. Uh, and that's probably the right thing to do. He's decided to make a stand. Well, sometimes That's the experience enough. coming out, I think. I mean, you have to draw a line in the sand sooner or later, don't you, Steve? You can't let, you can't let people push you around. <laughs> yes, those lines in the sand. Oh, and here's trouble. Well, it's only 14,000 for Fiona. She may think she's pot committed. And she has, he says, good call. He doesn't know he's winning. Ace Jack <laughs> is ahead. This is the best news John Houston's received all day. Anything but a seven, and he's back in this tournament. It's a pleasant surprise, isn't it? <laughs> Do you think that was a right to bet there? To, to bet into the player that was so, so low on chips that he was perhaps desperation stakes? Well, it seems like Fiona critical. may be getting her, her, her just desserts here. She's played. There's one card to come. A seven or a four. Four would split the pot. Seven would win it for Fiona. The ace jack is going to hold up. I mean, it does seem, Steve, that uh, she's been playing very loose before the flop, and, and, and that's what happens, isn't it? Well, she flat called with ace seven, and then there was a raise after her, and then she called again. And, um, well, where do you stand with ace seven after a raise? Not in good nick. Well, she made a, an attempt to uh, go for the pot on the after the flop, but probably, probably against the player who wasn't able to get rid of his hand this time around. So Fiona Foster, all that up and down has left her just about where she started, near the 100,000 mark. But the real good news is for John Houston, who, uh, well, he thought he was going to be the first player walking, it, it seemed like. Possibly from uh, Fiona's 
position. That little bet nice there <laughs> as a sort of bluff could be a bit of advertising for the future. Should she get a proper hand and put some money in? People may not believe her now. This isn't the greatest hand to be raising with or even calling with early on. She's, uh, well, she's not in huge danger, is she? She's still got plenty of chips, Fiona does. And, uh... This is this is looking like the kind of game, Steve, where limping in before the flop is only an open invitation to the rest of the table. Still more nice. And uh, this pot raised up from the small blind by Jazz Bailey. <laughs> Obviously, to some degree, the players have to be a bit wary of Fiona's perhaps inexperience at this level in not knowing what to lay down. So with that raise of ace four. Probably Jez doesn't exactly know where Fiona is at. And does he fancy bluffing too much? <laughs> Check. Check. Oh, has Jez opened the door Check. here? King Just or a Jack? Jack. Yeah. Check. Check. Well, that's two Check. checks. She could well have bet there and perhaps won it. <laughs> I'll tell you what, this is almost seems like a sign of respect from Jess Bailey. He says, I don't want to bluff with Fiona. She's even crazier than I am. <laughs> well, I think that was pretty good play there from Jess Bailey. Just seeing where he was in the hand without losing any money. And has now taken a stab at it on the river, and it's worked. And it would have worked either way. Yeah, he was waiting till he was positive he had the best hand. And uh, stuck the bet in. And Great uh, game poker for, um, you know, one minute you're sort of going well, next minute you're on the ropes, you've got to rec have a regroup, what? the bell rings, <laughs> yeah. you get a chance to sort of like shake yourself to get your senses back and then you're off and right, running and you may have another good round. <laughs> you never know how it's going to unfold, the story. <laughs> so, well, there's not a lot of talk on this table, but these, they seem to be tr enjoying themselves tremendously. I think everybody's aware that this, <laughs> that this game has got more thievery than a, than a den of iniquity. Oh, Jez Bailey. Nearly up to the 200,000 mark. <laughs> He's pilfered a percentage of chips off of every player around the table. They've all donated in varying degrees. Yeah, he's certainly not precious, isn't he? Uh, Jazz Bailey's taking <laughs> chips from everybody. Yes, regardless. the women, the old, <laughs> the infirm. This is actually the first real hand that Fiona has, uh, has found herself with. She's raising. I think she said raise, did she? Hold. She raised the minimum 4,000 more, and Ian's <laughs> peeling off a flop with her. There's like 16,000 in there now. Yeah. Well, and, she's, uh, hit, she's hit top pair, and he's hit a pair as well. And he's betting. He's going to find out where he is, 8, as it's called. And I'll go all in. And all all in. in gets him out of trouble, oh, although I didn't really want to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> All in means goodbye, Ian. What am I going to do with you? <laughs> I mean, uh, Ian has had success uh, at every level of poker, but uh, he has found the going tough at this table so far. He's got to believe an all-in bet. It's too big. He's got to believe it. Just add a bit of aggression to your game and it'd be oh. perfect. You were trying to get me all-in. That's what you're trying to Well, you were trying to get me all-in. And uh, Ian Woodley has laid that down, but I don't think he knows for sure whether he laid down the winner or the loser, Steve. I mean, uh, that's how much uh, respect these players have for Fiona. She's capable of anything at any time, they think. It's hard to separate these six right now. Besides the the chip difference, the obvious chip lead from Jez. I mean, uh, you can really see any of the any of the six coming uh, and having the aggression required to win this. Uh, Dave Broadhurst has been a little conservative, I guess, Steve. But uh, there's no harm in that. No, it, it's so hard to, to tell how how it's going to unfold. Obviously, the cards dictate so much of poker. But you must uh, congratulate Jez Bailey on. The amount of action he's given around the table, he's really been the catalyst in, <laughs> yes. in setting this table alight. <coughs> yeah, yes. He's got the others right at it in many ways. So and here he goes again. 
He is massively aggressive. Any ace. Cool. It really is any ace. And he's got a call from Dave Broadhurst. Well, it was it was quite optimistic of Dave to think that was going to be an unraised pot. But uh, here we've got now. Well, he's not got a lot, has Broadhurst. And he's got less now. That's made middle pair for Jez. Check. 10,000. It's wasted no time. And ending this queen clean and quick. Welcome back. <laughs> Plenty of poker to play here on the PartyPoker.net European Open. A lot easier when you're watching at home. You've got to realize the only people in the whole world who could want to see those cards who can't are the players themselves. <laughs> it's Anybody cruel. else can tune in. Yeah, it's cruel. And the dealer, of course. Raised from Houston. It, I think it's been it's about 16. 14. 14, excuse me, 6 <coughs> plus 8. Broadhurst. Uh, oh, the action's on Jazz. Suited connectors. And uh, that's a very disciplined pass. Yes, you see the difference there, the suited connectors, but it was more expensive to play. So, in a way, the value of the suited connectors goes down. I'm not, I'm not calling. You put too much money in to try and hit a miracle flop. If you can get in cheaply to see, you may get a miracle flop. You haven't done too much damage if you don't. But I'm not going to. Yeah. And uh, Jazz rightly realising that that was going to be an expensive pot if he played at all. The best type of hand for right. those suited not connectors not is a multi-way pot uh, where it doesn't cost you too much money. Should it get to a part of the game where there's only a couple of players in a hand, those suited connectors are not worth so much, then you have to value the high cards and the high starting hands. <laughs> <laughs> we just looked at one card. <laughs> I mean, uh, of course, it's great to have good cards before the flop, but uh, this game has shown that it's, it's, the, it's the naked aggression that's been the key so far. That, that's what's won the day. First to speak. Just called with the pair of threes, hoping with those pair of threes for no raise. Doesn't happen often at this level. <laughs> no, it hasn't happened often tonight. And Ian's got one of Houston's threes locked up. Fiona's got nothing at all. Is that the Montana banana or Montana banana? How is it? How is it sir? The, the, the Montana two, banana. What is that all about? <laughs> what was that to do with 2-9? I've never heard an explanation for it, but it, somehow it seems to fit. Check. Check. And interestingly enough, pair of threes. 10, like the nuts right here. And does Houston know he's bluffing with the best? Oh. Tell you, for a man who felt like he was going to be the first one out, John Houston has done well to get back in this uh, tournament. Four right back. Yes, I think stamping his authority around the table in some way, shape, or form, he's not lost the plot as far as attitude is concerned. Enjoying the moment, smiling, appearing confident. That's what poker's all about, as much as the cards sometimes. Been a bit quiet recently, John Shaw. So much depends on the cards, but he's not getting them at the moment. He has almost like a bit of a gear change from John there. He's watching Jez set the pace. And Jez is quite willing, especially with face cards. That was a raisable hand, King Jack. Obviously, starting hands, they don't have to be anything really. What's the point of having a starting hand, Jesse? No point at all, really, is there? <laughs> Well, they said, <laughs> you said before, the best hand before the flop, usually the best hand after the flop. Let's see if that holds true here. Houston trying to hit a piece of something. And he has. Well, it cost him a bit of money to see it very quickly into the red chips. 20,000 20, there. He was wasting no time. I did that in a very authoritative manner. A sweep around the yellow minions to get to his big red powerful ones 
And it's goodbye Jez Bailey here. Unless he wants to commit Harry Carey. He's got two over cards. His six cards working for him. Should he decide to take a risk? But 20,000's a lot. I know he's got 193,000. How committed do you think John Houston is to this, at this hand? Well, he won't like that call at all. That changes the equation somewhat. Although, from Jez Bailey's body language, he doesn't particularly like calling. So, everything to play for here is going to be who's got the strongest will. That's a great card for John Houston. It's an undercard to his pair. Mm. And uh, oh. he's just trying to pump this pot up. That's the problem with calling. Now where'd you go? It's cost you 20,000. You want to put another 50,000 on a draw? Lots of money. Yeah, Jazz down to six cards here. He's, uh, he can't even really beat a bluff, can he? He must put Houston on something better than what he's got anyway. Twenty thousand wasted on drawing to a jack or a king, and that has uh, padded John Houston's climb back into the thick of things even more. Second now. So Jez Bailey coming back down to earth a bit, and John Houston from the cellar, the second dweller. It's really terrifying, isn't it? I mean, we are six-handed here. You know what I mean? You're replacing the glass, I'm backing it on its own. It's been a good table. It's been a, a lively table. The chat's been good. Play's been relaxed. You have to feel like whoever comes through this heat is going to have earned their Pass. way. I mean, Pass. there's nothing being given away here. And here we go. Fiona, perhaps Rise. thinking she's got to Rise. make a move Stands to make and stamp some Pass. authority on the table. She hasn't been Pass. involved that Six much. Call. And this could well, this could well work, although. Call. Wow. Mr. Broadhurst has decided that the 10-2, the Doyle Brunson hand, call. is good enough to call with. And they're calling her. Well, Doyle Brunson won two world championships with that hand, but <laughs> Dave Broders is going to have to. <laughs> He's in bits, really. That, that's, <laughs> well, obviously, a ten or a two would help. <laughs> Bailey with the king nine has Fiona Foster dominated in the king department, and that's not what oh Fiona my. Foster wants to see. What a beautiful flop from Jez Bailey. Monster. Flush draw, straight flush draw, top pair. Better kicker. <coughs> oh dear. There's every chance we could be losing Fiona Foster this hand, Steve. Yeah. Well, she's smiling. There's a smile going on. 20,000. Well, from past experience, she goes all in. <laughs> you wait and wait. <laughs> no cards. She's got the hands on both lots of chips. She's about to go all in, I feel. She's got nearly no way to win. A couple ways to tie. But uh, if those chips go forward, can she get away from this? Can she, can she work out her kicker's rubbish? How could she know? By the size of the bet? By the guy coming out betting? He's been betting all day long. Yeah, right you are. All in. Raise She's all moved in. all in and Jez Bailey's not throwing it away. Broadhurst might be put off his pair of tens, mm. but... Uh, done that to me. <laughs> I know it feels. Pass. Broadhurst passes very quickly. This is terrible trouble for Fiona Foster. Well, he's really got to call. 57,000 more. Call. Cool. Call. Cool. He's not folding a straight flush draw. And cards, please. And uh, this <laughs> is <laughs> danger. <laughs> now, there are a couple of split pot opportunities up there, Steve. If a 10 comes or a jack comes, Obviously, a six would be very nice for Fiona as well. As long as it's not the six of clubs, but Fiona Foster all in here and trailing. At this stage, the nine kicker plays. 
Ooh. It's a six! It's an off-suit no, six! You can't Ooh. get your breath. Oh, she's embarrassed. <laughs> she's going to do the interview with him afterwards. He doesn't look happy. Well, Jess Bailey has a bunch of redraws. Any nine, any queen, any oh, club. Man. There's the club! Well, it all changes. The flush holds up, but Thank I suppose a bit much. of justice well there. Thanks a lot. Nice for you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Draw, redraw, outdraw, and Fiona Thanks Foster out first. No way. <laughs> this game, Steve, just a bit too fast for her, perhaps. Oh, thanks, <laughs> The, the last hand, once again, the money all in on the flop, and Jez Bailey, the straight flush draw. The turn actually gave Fiona the best hand with the club on the river, the club flush, taking us five-handed. Fiona, a different pace to this game from last week. Well, it's just a different league. I mean, they're completely, obviously, <laughs> out of my league, and, um, you know, the truth will out. And well, it just seemed like the most aggressive table maybe we've ever seen on uh, on TV poker. Yeah, well, they, they, they certainly, I mean, there's no messing about, is there? It's just a completely different atmosphere from last week's game. and It's so intense and serious, and you know, they know what you've got, you know, <laughs> uh, before you do almost. And uh, it's kind of quite scary and, and very intimidating, but it was fine. Yeah. Don't be so modest. You got away with a couple of good bluffs yourself there. And that last hand, when the six came, did you think you were out of it? I thought, well, I thought, uh, well, I was absolutely shocked when that came over because I thought once we turned the cards over, I thought that, that that was it. So I thought for a minute I was going to live to fight another day, but no, it's only right and fair. It would have been a very bad pee if I had ended up going getting that money. When the merry-go-round spins this fast, someone has to fall off. And Fiona Foster in with the top pair, but out flushed, and we are down to five. Welcome back here. Poker <coughs> action from the PartyPoker.net European Open. Jesse, May, and Steve Davis from up above. Woodley having a smile. He says, uh, these are four of the craziest guys I've ever sat down with. Class. All right. Well, yeah, of course. Raise 15,000 more, 21. All the rules are out of the window in this one. <laughs> it's tough on everybody. You almost wonder what they're pumping in the air there. Pass. Yeah, a lot of. <clears throat> Fifteen to call. That is just marvelous. And, uh, I mean, from uh, from John Houston's point of view, he may think Jez Bailey is getting the hump if a re-raise comes here. Yeah, but he hasn't got a strong enough hand with King Six, has he? Or has he? <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> Re-raise. Raised. 30,000 more. 51 total. If John Houston, he almost looked like he was going to push him in. He better have a think here. Well, he's he didn't read him right last time. <laughs> Just check. <laughs> see the flop. Just check. It's amazing, Steve. This is, this is really the first time that John Houston has gotten way out of line before the flop. Uh, well, surely, I'm knowing sure. full well that it was a risky raise, he shouldn't put any more money in. How can he? He can't, surely. I think he's going to give it a bit of the dwell up. He, 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 he really doesn't believe Jez has anything, does he? But he, he, he's got leaving less. As it is, Jez has the nuts. Yes, for newcomers to the poker world, often when a player has been, the bluff has been called, the next move is to <coughs> pretend as if you've got a big decision <laughs> before doing what you knew you were going to do in the first place, which was to throw them away. <laughs> this gives two things. It doesn't give away the fact you had a bad hand, and also it gives you television shot. exposure. Isis? Isis. Don't no, show them. Oh, he should. Oh, he, must. he hasn't. He wanted to, didn't he? Make a move, if it's up, I want to make a move. It's, it's called time, isn't it? <laughs> well... Bailey over the 200,000 mark again. And Ian Woodley down at the bottom. 28% of hands played. He just can't really get going, can he, at all tonight? He can't, but he's, he's a bit like a leech, isn't he? He's just, he's just hanging on. I mean, uh, this is a man who has no give up in him. So 
of five left, but the blinds ever so high. Doesn't seem like there's enough room at the table for five. Not at 15,000 around. Somebody's going to have to go. There could be some volatile action with those two cards. 20. 20,000, only double the bet at this stage. But uh, respect given around to the blinds. And Woodley, who's in an all or nothing spot himself, can't get a hand. I'm all in. All in. Oh, oh, cool. oh. called. There was the problem. Pair of eights, not marvelous. He's run into a bigger pair. We'll switch it after. Huh? Yeah, it just uh, it pretty much had to happen, didn't it? John uh, Shaw hoping to find Houston with two over cards, but as it is, the higher pair has left him in desperate straits, and there was not much between these two in chip wise. So uh, I'm not sure who's all in, but this is a very decisive pot for both of them. Sean needing the eight. He hasn't hit it yet. Couple of cards could make him a straight. Turn in River. Houston very strong. That ace changes nothing. River to come. Only the eight now. And that seven would have been nice on the turn, but two queens holding up. And uh, the snowmen going downtown. They're going to count them up. Uh, we may have we may have just lost a player. If John Shaw had less chips than John Houston, he'll be outside. Yeah, I think it's awesome. yeah. might just be there. Ten thousand left. Well, that is a wing and a prayer. Floundering, not beached completely, but certainly not doing much, and it's really it's time to go. It's certainly time me. to put <laughs> put the ten thousand in on the next hand, I would imagine. Yeah, John Shaw, winner of a televised yeah. poker tournament early That's last year, fluffing, now finds himself in a situation, <laughs> Steve, where yeah. he has to double through yeah, twice just just to have a short stack. Double three through four times to really make it worthwhile here. All right. Come on, one here. And uh, he's, he's also in the big blind here, which uh, is almost uh, sort of making matters worse. I think it's going to expedite the situation a little bit. <laughs> he doesn't have to look at his cards. He's all in for the big blind, as John Shaw from Dunfermline. They really, you shouldn't look at these. There's no point in looking. Have a bit of fun turning them over at the end. <laughs> I think so. Let everybody else see them, but don't look at them yourself. <laughs> don't look at them, John. I mean, you can't really blame Shaw for the way that last hand played out, can you, Steve? Uh, pocket eights. Looked very strong at that stage. Everybody cool. <clears throat> well, he's had a look. Oh, he might quite like those. Considering he's only got one hand, that's not two bad cards, really. Is that a raise from <coughs> Broadhurst, or was that just five blue chips adding up to ten? Ten. Yeah, I think oh, he's just was. called it. <coughs> and uh, John Houston. This looks more. No. Cool. Says he will try and take Shaw out as well. So we're three-way here, but there's a side pot now between Houston and Dave Broadhurst. Well, the, the queen is live. <laughs> oh, John Shaw's card. Sorry, I got them mixed up. I thought he had Jack-10. I was looking at the wrong people. Amazingly, at this stage, John Shaw's queen is the best hand. So there is a side pot between Houston and Broadhurst, and John Houston has the best hand now with a pair of sixes. <laughs> Broadhurst gets fruity here. Yeah, he could it. knock Houston out. <laughs> <laughs> that would be interesting, wouldn't it? Check. Check. I think they'd be checking this down. Yeah, John Shaw needs now. a queen. 
and that has made a full house for Houston. I'll check. 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 Full house. <laughs> Showdown. Okay. Full okay. house takes not only the pot, but it takes John Shaw out of this tournament. And uh, the damage was done the last hand. <laughs> but with that, party poker ace champion John Shaw out in fifth. Well, they're bunching up at the top to some degree, apart from Ian Woodley, who sadly has not got off the ground this evening. Jess Bailey still out in front with 220. Woodley, the tightest player at the table, but uh, that seems to be due to the cards he's been dealt, Steve. And uh, I mean, he's hung on this far. How much longer before he has to move? The blind's still five and 10,000. There's just one big blind this hand. Uh, does Ian basically have to consider any face card at this stage? Well, he certainly hasn't got much room for maneuver, and should he have some good cards, it's whether he wants to put all his chips in in one go, and you would think he's very close to that. Nice. The rest of the lads have got a bit more play in them. Houston and Broadhurst side by side here. Button and big blind. And, uh, Houston, just looking at the flop for, for letting Broadhurst look at it cheaply, and he's picked up a pair. Check. Check. 10,000. Decision now for Broadhurst. It's not easy to hit the flop. He's hit it, the oh. other guy hasn't. He's asking the question, has he got an eight or a six? Well, he could have been forgiven for not putting money in there. John Houston's looking very focused all of a sudden. Seems like the kind of man who's ready to seal the deal here. My name's John Texas Houston. I've been playing poker for 20 years. I'm not going to be bullied, and I'm going to try and go out and win it in, uh, in style. I want to show, uh, show the people uh, the way poker can be played. I'm all right, Mickey, if you watch Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I need it. <coughs> Well, after the next two hands, Woodley will have 41, and uh, he probably reckons he can go that low and still be okay. He'll be able to put the players to a serious decision with the 40,000. Worst comes to worst. Jez Bailey has picked up everything cool, and I want look available oh. <coughs> so far this evening. And is a raise coming? Call. It's just called a chance to perhaps put some pressure on. He's obviously got rubbish. Yes, he has. <coughs> and also, one of his rubbish is already owned by the other player. So if an eight comes... Not good news. Check. Check. Oh, this would be a brave bet, wouldn't it? Oh, it sure would. Nick a few chip chips, though, wouldn't it? I mean, that's 20,000 in there. It's 20,000 to Nick. Check. And there's the heart. It's giving Woodley a flush draw. Bailey, second pair. <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> That's another horrible decision, I suppose. Can he can he put any pressure on him at all with a bet? <laughs> yeah, I'm, really, I'm starting to feel sorry for Ian Woodley. <laughs> Every, He's not got <laughs> enough chips to do a move. <laughs> oh, <laughs> boy. Well, he, he just has to pass, doesn't he? Well, he can't really scare him off, that's for certain. He can't really call got no chips left to do any damage with afterwards. Hart would make the winner. He knows that. Is there a heart on top of the deck? If he stuffs it all in, Jez Bailey hasn't got to find much more from his huge stack to call him. 
Well, Ian Woodley's come this far. He's not going to stick it all in on an eight high, is he? <laughs> he's going to. He's going to choose when the chips go in. And Jez Bailey with the cravat, paradise. The record for sticking it all in with a high hand is held at the moment in this tournament by Ronnie O'Sullivan, who went all in with a nine high. <laughs> He called, didn't he? Ian Woodley. <laughs> Ian Woodley would have beaten that with an eight. <laughs> Had he, of course, called and then called the river. <coughs> Forty-six thousand chips. Ian Woodley now has, and he's the small blind. Broadhurst to speak. That one looks good. So good. Oh. And uh, Razor Rooney. Yeah, Jazz Bailey looking at every ace like a license to steal. Oh. But just a call here. Just a call. <laughs> he's got to put. He's got to put the small blind, make it up. And it's even that's a horrible decision. <laughs> oh, it's a nightmare. It really is. It's a horrible game. It just tempt us all the time. He's had so many horrible decisions. I feel so sorry for him. Not. I mean, sometimes you just you just want to quit, don't you? <laughs> I think Woodley would settle for half his money back at this stage. And, uh, no raise. Looking to hit a three on the flop and do some serious damage. Yeah, that would be a welcome sight for John. An ace and a three on the flop. Wouldn't that be special? The three would be an interesting card now. <laughs> that would make just, <laughs> just barely the straight. Oh, that would be a horrible card to see. A three of clubs or a three of diamonds. Oh, the the diamonds would be even worse. Not much, I suppose. 20,000. <laughs> Well, this is an interesting decision for John Houston. He has to reckon. There's not many hands. I mean, uh, what could Bailey have? Well, he could have a four, a five, or a queen. Are well, you flat called originally? What well, could he have? King, queen, queen, jack. Probably not ace, queen. Couldn't get like a, a lower kind of full of flop that I want to want to whip you, know what I? <laughs> <laughs> He was close. Uh, show me then. No, I think he was in front. Not that close. Was I in front? Yeah. Yeah, I can't tell you all the time, can I? Hmm? I can't tell you all the time. You know, fool. Was I in front? Yeah. Yeah, I'm not <laughs> Jess Bailey says, uh, I'll tell you what yeah. I had. Ice queen. And for $25, I'll tell you what I really front. had. <laughs> Sorry. I'm not in front. Right? No, you were in front. Definitely. Please, this game has gotten very serious. It's really the hard nuts left now. Flop came just over. Four knocks on a rock. And it's 10,000 on Jez Bailey to call. Oh. Poor Ian. <laughs> tell you. you shouldn't play poker unless you can take a joke. <laughs> My gosh. Well, the action's gotten very cagey here. And Ian Woodley is determined. I mean, you've, whatever you've got, you've to got take to take his last yeah. breath, yeah. gasping yeah. from a head. So, you know, I've done the right thing. You put yeah. twenty thousand, put twenty thousand in. All of a sudden, well, he'd really like, like a good hand now. Committed. The yeah. next hand, he's going to be the big blind. That's another ten, no, eaten out of his forty-one thousand. Then the small blind right after that, if you're yeah. he'd be down to twenty-five thousand. <laughs> yeah. A hand now would be yeah, ideal. I'll tell you what, Ian Woodley, just one round ago, folded a king four from this under the gun position. I think a king four. Four is gonna is gonna look like a straight flush. This could this. be the one. Could this be the one? Oh, we like some. Oh well, not really. <coughs> I think he's trying, got to, it trying to pretend he likes them. Oh. Doesn't like them. He still has time, oh. but he's getting very close to the edge of the precipice. 
cool. Cool. Well, if Ian Woodley can come back Race. from here and win, it'll it'll it just a, it'll be the patience of a Zen master. And as it is, uh, he's made the right decision because Jez Bailey is not to be pushed around with the king. Well, it's the Sorry, Broadhurst Bailey confrontation no. has been quite intriguing. Sorry. He came over the top of him with <laughs> not much last time, although he may have got a read on him. He's asked him how much it is. Could he come over the top again? Of course oh. not. Do you get the feeling that these two, Broadhurst and Bailey, are just, uh, no, no, they're cruising no, for no, a no, bruise, no, and no, at no, some no, point no, they're no, going to no, clash. No, but no, Jez no, Bailey, 260,000, has yet to be stopped. Back. I think Dave Broadhurst has uh, made his mind up. He just doesn't believe Jez Bailey one little bit. <laughs> so, once again, back to Ian Woodley's dilemma. The thing that's entertaining us all at the moment. He needs a hand. The big blind is going to eat a quarter of his stack. Well, the, the highs in poker wouldn't be any fun unless there were the lows to match it. And Woodley is in poker hell here. He cannot find a face card to save his life. That's enough for Dave. Just calling. He's going to find a bit more of a problem. Jess Bailey's been raging all night. This isn't oh. going to appear anything different. Oh, he's just oh, yeah. called. And oh. you're all in with King 10. Oh, what a time to get that. <laughs> he's he's dominated left, right, and center. There's only the 10 that can help him. Jeez, That's awful timing. That is really bad timing. When your number's up. <laughs> well, <laughs> oh. I mean, Ian Woodley. He, he might get called in two spots here. He's, he's going to be flabbergasted to see what he's up against. He, some days you just shouldn't get out of bed. And, and Bailey could re-raise all in. Does he want to re-raise all in? Cool. Oh. He doesn't really want to. Oh. Yeah, as, as Woodley says, he's getting good value here. Mm -hmm. Even though he... Lovely. Come on, girl. There's a side pot here, but if the 10 comes, <laughs> Woodley's actually got a chance to triple up. Well, if anybody bets in the side pot, it means that Woodley's probably dead and buried anyway. And there's the ace that seals the fate, I believe. It really does. Queen and a jack may help things I for mean, Woodley. You, you couldn't have begrudged Ian Woodley a break here, but <laughs> it, it just doesn't seem in the cards. And that all in from Jez Bailey. Cool. I Cold. Oh, he called Cold. it. Cold. That's a monster call. With a king high. That's violent. Okay, leave your chips, Dave. What? What did he do there? Does he, does he, what's he got confused with there somehow? Dave Broadhurst has just taken a view that Jez Bailey does not have the ace, I guess. I don't believe that. He's called. Was Dave made up. <coughs> How much has he called for? It's 125,000 he had before the start of this pot. He's got nothing left. Two players going out. This end is huge. They're both drawing dead. The aces are going to hold up. We've just lost two players. Well, you've got to interview, interview two people now. Good, good, guys, and, and Steve Davis, Dave Broder has been playing a great game. It's all gone in one fell swoop. <coughs> he must have seen something. <laughs> Pink elephants, perhaps. The double whammy has halved the field and doubled the trouble. Woodley out. Broadhurst gone. And it's a head-up situation. Bailey on Houston. Rare is a double eagle, a double knockout. Ian Woodley first. It, it seemed like you were in your own version of poker hell there. You, oh. you couldn't pick up a hand, could you? It was horrendous. Absolutely. I had one hand, pocket coins. <laughs> just, horrendous. just terrible. The cards were dead for me. And the, the King 10 looked like it's the worse, crown yeah. jewels and you were in yeah. third place. I was in the big blind, so I, you know, I had to go in. Now, Dave Broadhurst, you have played a great game all night long, and it seems like you just took the view that Jez was bluffing. Yeah, I thought he was bluffing. You're clearly not one who's not willing to back up his instincts to the hilt. Uh, fancy it, put it in. Who's going to win?
going to win. Be in it after the break from the PartyPoker.com European Open. Mano a mano, head to head. It's Steve Davis. Are we here for a long one or a quick one? Well, this gentleman here is yeah. no Give flash in the pan. Yeah. He'll try and get some gameplay against a very volatile player in Jez Bailey, who has so many chips now. Christmas has come early, or is it birthdays? Whatever <coughs> it is, the gift from Dave Broadhurst of all his chips. Good luck, Good luck. Makes Good luck. him a massive favourite. And let's just hope that David Broadhurst sleeps easy in his bed tonight and doesn't have too many nightmares over what happened. Looking at the head-to-head -head stats, Jez Bailey, twice as many chips. And uh, he's really leading in every statistic. Houston, of course, has the experience, though. Action on the small blind and the button. That is a feature of heads-up play. Jezel act first before the flop and last in all post-flop betting rounds. Nice. Well, flat call. No raise. Double up, I think we go dead level on chips. <coughs> okay. <laughs> and uh, the six would not be a happy story for John Houston. Nobody's got a piece of nothing. Check. 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 20,000 out there to be won. Can Houston show some speed? <laughs> He's checked and give him a look. Bailey reaches for chips, and so does Houston reach for chips. <laughs> They're both very suspicious, aren't they? <laughs> oh, that's a classic move. Reach for some chips to sort of pretend you're going you're gonna to call or bet. It may have worked as well. Another check, and all of a sudden... They've both got the same hand here. Both players playing the board, and the 20,000 by Houston. The bet on the river, taking that pot. When you have these head-up battles, it can only go so long before the, the two heads knock. The knees are knocking. Why not the heads? But I think he smelt cool. some sort cool. of fear. Perhaps hoping for a raise now. Fair raise. Not going to get it with those two cards. Absolutely not. <coughs> Five he should have raised now. Ah, there's, there's interesting, as they say in Wales. Check. Pair for both players. No flush draw. 25,000. Second pair, no kicker. Houston representing something. And he's not even Pass. thinking twice anymore. He's just become a, a mucking machine. <laughs> well, he's been behind just about every time he's folded, hasn't he? I mean, uh, you'd think... Uh, he's certainly in his shell, isn't he? amazing. It, 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 it was very similar to what happened in the celebrity uh, qualifying heat that John Regis was a huge chip leader and got very conservative. Is Jez Bailey in danger of letting John Houston overtake or pass him? And he telegraphed it as well. He's certainly lost the momentum, hasn't he? Right. He doesn't look Raise. the same player at the moment. 20,000 more, 35 total. Oh. oh. Well. I mean, you, 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 you just said it. It's a flat call, isn't it? Is it a call? Call and trap? Oh, not cool. Oh. All in. Well, fair enough, yeah. Raised all in. And this is the biggest hand that Nothing Jez Bailey that. has seen so far since the head-up began. And now he's been re-raised. He's just hoping that Bailey's got something big. Unfortunate for him, he's probably got not enough. Sounds like King Nine suited. 
Jez has won two big pots with it tonight. Cool. He's called! Oh. oh, he's got it. He he's cracked. He cracked. He's facing two aces. 16%. It's not where you want to be. The pressure was being applied time after time. It must have been so desperate for looking for some sort of hand. He's got to find some great cards now to get out of trouble. Yeah, Houston's all in, but way ahead here. And Steve, it has to be that overraise, the big bet. Bailey thought it was a sign of weakness. Well, he's got a king. He needs another one. Yeah, the nine's no good. What a flop. Jez has got outs. Either of the two kings would end this. Or virtually end it. An ace would really end the hand. Well, a spade now comes into the equation. Flash draw oh. for Bailey. <laughs> Houston's saying, keep it red and low. It's a club. <laughs> wow. <laughs> we saw it was black to start with. As Amanda pushed it forward, there's a massive swing of chips now. John Houston, all of a sudden, he's got the cards, he's got the momentum, he's got the chips. This double through has taken him to the chip lead, and what a seesaw. Well, I know it's easy to criticize, but he probably shouldn't have put the money in there with King Nine. But even so, when you look at it, he did have a chance to get out of trouble. And when the turn came, Jez Bailey had a flush draw, top two pair, but the aces held. Aces and jacks beat kings up. And uh, the plot thickens. Can't give you any read whatsoever that I've got. I don't know. Hold on. It was a good little act, wasn't it, you put on? But uh... they call him <coughs> Texas, <coughs> and they've called him that for 20 years. And. Uh, John Houston, He's given a few lessons here. Jazz Bailey has come this far, but uh, all of a sudden it's one-way traffic, Steve. In your opinion, as a as a, a relative Hi. novice to this posi position, Jesse, was it that bad a call, or was it you know if he perhaps he had ace queen the and the king nine, and then the king nine <laughs> on the flop is is in front, <laughs> isn't it, with the king jack jack? I, mean, I don't want to put you on the spot. I just want some help. <laughs> Well, I, I think it's funny how the poker goes, you know, it, it's almost like Jez had made up his mind that he was going to wait for a big hand before he moved. He let about 15 of them go by and finally found one he liked and just uh, just made up his mind that it must be the best. It, it, you know, uh, when you're waiting around, usually uh, sometimes the bus passes you by. That, that. So can Jez now get busy, get back to that style that was so good early on that was Really impressive. <coughs> it destroyed most of the table. I mean, uh, I, I think Jez might, must have known he was behind there, Steve. It, he just, I, I think he, he believed, first of all, that maybe both of his cards were alive. And, and s s second of all, <laughs> should a jack come now, it's, his, it's all over, I feel. He, he's not in the right frame of mind yet to recover from this. <coughs> Luckily for him, a jack hasn't arrived. Not sure. Jack. Jack. We could have bet there and won it, but that's us saying that, knowing what's gone down. Check again. Check. The Check. eight Check. plays Check. right Check. now. There's a lot of split parts out there. And Bailey would be upset if the eight did play. <laughs> Actually, it's a split Fortunately, the now. eight doesn't play now. <laughs> Check. Check. Return the money to the owners. Two jacks, ace, king, queen. Chopper Rooney. Yeah, There's been a lot of twists and turns in this heat. And uh, when would you have believed that John Houston was going to have three quarters of the chips in play? <coughs> no, thank you. I'm fine. I'm what happens, if you, uh, yeah. Well, he's played a very sensible game. 22. And he's been rewarded because you, of it. Uh, carried on then with you. You bet then I'll call, yeah? Yeah. Really? Whatever. Whatever. Okay, gentlemen. <laughs> now a bit of psychology coming in. <laughs> the bluff's off the table. 
Do you, do you think Jazz has a game plan here? I mean, he seemed so sure of himself all night long. And now, uh, no, I don't think he has now. I think um, he's just lost it a bit. He needs to sort of regroup, but it's difficult to regroup when you keep on getting cards and you have to put money in. It's not like you can go to the, the washroom and uh, smack yourself around the face and tell yourself you've been doing something wrong. And uh, Houston not only has the momentum, the propensity to bluff, but the cards as well, that flush draw, easy to buy the pot with. And uh, he's certainly on the ropes, Jez Bailey at the moment. You know, they've, they've, they've played about 20 hands head up here, Stephen. I think John Houston has won about 15 or 16 of them. It's, 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 it's been real one-sided <laughs> stuff. You can uh, really feel the heat, can't oh you? Oh, my. Oh, I tell you, this is a great game, Poke. I thought Snooker was good to watching a guy squirming in his chair no, when he was <laughs> under pressure and the other guy was potting all the balls. <coughs> but Poker beats that. To watch somebody completely change their demeanour from chip leader to low stack. Just, just trying to work it out here. Just needs to win one to settle his nerves. Oh no, and that's Houston's hand. He's Raise. going nowhere. Raises with I'm the always. A7. Just re raised all in. He's been re raised Raise. all in. Does he believe again? He's got a horrible decision. <laughs> oh, it just never rained when it pours. <laughs> oh. This is just very tough to follow. Oh this. dear me. Cool. You've got to feel cool. for him there. That's all just in. unfortunate and. What can you do? Now, there are some split pots out there, but the nine plays in many opportunities, and Jez Bailey would be happiest to see hearts. He's all in and needs to get some chips back to continue on in this tournament. This could be the moment for John Houston, and he knows it. Here's the flop. There's no seven out there, and the low card's not a good omen. Seven, the key card right now for Jez. Houston on the verge of success here. Well, a couple of straight draws. Yeah, actually twice as many outs now for Jez Bailey. Any four or any nine. It's over. The nine plays. Ace nine high, and John Houston has done it. Well done, Alice. Looking back well there. The last hand, another aced up disaster for Jez Bailey. He found the ace, but Houston had bigger. The board, no help at all, and ace nine high, beating ace eight seven high, a pip and a prayer, taking John Houston through to the semifinal. Well, the age old question answered. What happens when an unstoppable force meets an immovable object? John Houston, congratulations. Uh, just... What a rocky road you walked today. <sighs> it was unbelievable. It was a lot of fun. It was uh, it was a minefield out there in the early start. You didn't know where you was, but you know I've just got to say to Jez, he played a great game. The I, guy was you know unbelievable. He really I was. Mean, and I, I mean, Jez, commiserations. You you <coughs> pretty much put on a clinic there for most of this heat, and then it just slipped away at the end, didn't it? Yeah, I think um, I had all the good cards at the beginning of the, of the mm. round, but um, yeah, I'm looking a bit disappointed. Jez, you, you were a catalyst in, in producing an exciting heat. You, you also raised with 6-3, which was marvellous, which threw the, <laughs> the, the rule book, went out the window there. Okay. But then you had a really bad run of cards, and the King-9 of spades must yeah. have looked good to you. Well, I, um, I try and vary my play a bit, to be honest with you, So, um, and I've been really conservative or playing with uh, you know, good hands, so I just thought I'd change it a bit. But yeah, I was a bit disappointed when my look changed. John, you're the first player through to the semi-finals. Uh, What's your plan from here? Keep on going. I'm going to rest. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was intense out there, Jess. It really was. Like I said, it was. Uh, I didn't know where where I was in. You know, the I mean, the turning point was obviously the aces. It was massive. John Houston through to the semifinals. Join us next time when we're going to have Tony the Lizard Bloom and a bit of gambling history. Mickey the Kid Wernick here on the PartyPoker.net European Open.